Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you uh, Spriggans and how to like play them, their uh, strategy and whatnot. Uh, Spriggans are a personal favorite of mine. I just really like their concept and how they play, and I just wanted like I just want to spread my enthusiasm to everyone. So um, let's get started. So right here we have all these main Spr um, Spriggan cards and what kind of ratios we're going to be playing it in. So um. Starting off with the double Captain Sargus. Um, what this reads is that if it's in your hand, field, or graveyard, you can attach it to a Spriggan's Exceeds monster you can control. Uh, you control, and every single one of your Spriggan's monsters has this effect. So um, uh, keep that in mind. And what it does is, during your opponent's turn, while it's face up on the field, you can detach one Xyz material from a monster you control, then destroy one card on the field. Um, so, seeing that all of your monsters can attach themselves to your main Xyz monster, which is this card right here, um, you should be able to get enough Xyz material on that monster to get your pop, so that is pretty nice. And it has a secondary effect where if it if it's used as Xyz, where, um, if a Spriggan's Exceeds monster has it as Exceeds material, uh, so if you attach it maybe using its first effect, it gains 500 attack. Um, that isn't too no notable, but uh, sometimes it can come up, you know, um, because the Spriggan's Exceeds monster itself doesn't have too much attack. Um, two copies of Spriggan's Banger. Um, it has the same eff first effect where you can uh, attach it from your hand field or graveyard, and its second effect is that you can banish this card and another Spriggan's monster from your graveyard in order to add any Spriggan's card from your deck to your hand. So, um, and depending on the situation, you want to add different cards. Uh, you might want to add this card right here, which is an in deck terraforming. You might want to add this card right here, which is an in deck impermanence. And seeing that these are searchable, that is pretty nice. Um, but we, we will get to them later to like show what our banger can just search. Uh, one copy of Spriggan's Rocky. Um, we only run it as a one-off because what it does, it can add a Spriggan's Monster or a Vast Desert Gold Golgonda, which is your main um, field spell, to your hand, from your graveyard to your hand. And it has, a, it has the effect to just attach this material, uh, that should be standard by now. Um, it does only really come up in the grind game and if your opponent has maybe destroyed this card right here, uh, with your Spriggan's Banger, you might, might want to search your Rocky and then get back your Vast Desert Gold Golganda. Uh, the problem is that you do lose two monsters in your graveyard that you could use as Exceed material for your Exceed monsters since all of them have the Detach effect. So um, that's kind of the risk with Spriggan's Banger, but uh, Rocky is still a pretty solid card. Um, the two copies of Spriggan's Peed. Uh, Peed is just a pretty, pretty nice card where it's able to um, trivia itself on the field and then summon Spriggan's monster from your graveyard. So it can sometimes revive back your main boss monster if it has been destroyed, or it can even revive back your Captain Sargus if it's in the graveyard. Uh, it just has a lot of utility, so that is just super cool. Um, one copy of your terraforming. This is search your field spell, and by now you should realize that if they have an in deck um, terraforming and uh, terraforming you should know that this is gonna be um, th this is definitely gonna be a field spell based archetype um, so this um, terraforming is pretty self-explanatory just a field spell uh, Spriggan's Watch, Spriggan's Watch, it's it's a field spell, but if you control the field spell, the in team's field spell, then um, it gains a different effect where you can add any Spriggan's monster from your deck to your grave hand, and then send another one from your deck to the graveyard, uh, which just helps you, it basically turns into two Xyz materials, since both of them can just attach themselves, or um, if you like, drew a Peed and a, say, Sargus, um, you send a Sargus and you have the Peed. You normal summon the Peed, bring back the Sargus, so that can turn into even more interruptions. Um, it's just a pretty solid card, and you definitely want to run it as a 3 off. And finally, the uh, card itself, Vast Desert Gold Golganda, the main um, strategy piece in this deck. It says um, the most notable effect is that um, if you control no Spriggan's Xyz monsters, um, you can discard one Spriggan's card, special summon one Spriggan's Xyz monster from your extra deck. Um, so, n so you don't really Xyz summon the monster, you have to like summon it from the extra deck using this card's effect, which is why um, all of them just attach themselves to give it material, since you won't be bringing it out with any material. And it also makes all Spriggan's Xyz monsters gain 1000 attack, which is um, understandable since it only has 1600. And, um, 
what else does it do? Oh yes, and if a face-up exceeds monster you control leaves the field by card effect, uh, you can stop an opponent's monster from attacking for the rest of the turn. Uh, that might seem pretty unnecessary, but it will come up if we read the Sprig and Exceeds Monsters card effect, because it's able to make itself leave the field um, with its own effect, and it'll return to the field later, so that is super nice. And finally, our main um, another our main trap, uh, Spriggan's Glass. It's an in-team impermanence where um, if you control a Spriggan's monster, uh, you can choose any one opponent's main monster zone. And if there is a um, monster in that monster zone, then you can negate the effects of that, and it cannot attack directly. And if there is no monster in monster zone, it cannot be used this turn. And if you control a fusion monster that lists Fallen of Albus, you can um, choose two instead. But that never comes up it literally never comes up um so that's kind of our main deck um it kind of explains how you want to try and resolve this card load your xyz monster with xyz material and either just uh set up pops with our spriggan's captain or search um cards with spriggan's banger uh, which is kind of gonna be our main play all right for extra deck uh, we run two copies of uh, steel express uh, splint the steel express dragon the only reason why we run two of this is usually in Dogmatica variants. If you're not running a Dogmatica variant, you can drop this completely. Otherwise, it's um, pretty much useless and Dogmatica is the best variant right now. So I'll be showcasing that in this video. And it's another just, um, it's another Springance card because it doesn't have any notable on-field effects. Uh, but in the graveyard, if it's in the graveyard because of center this turn, you can summon one Springance monster straight from your deck, which is... Uh, your main way to get Spriggan's Captain Sargus out on the field. Um, one copy of Negalogia is a, a Zeus. Um, it's able to just turn your exp um, Spriggan's Ship Explorer into a fold board, board wipe. Um, and if you don't know what this does, if a if an Xyz monster is battled this turn, you can summon this card using that Xyz monster as the material. Um, so it's just able to rank itself on top of anything for free. And uh, once per turn, you can detach two material, send all other cards on the field to the graveyard. It is not targeting, it is not destroying. Um, so it's able to out cards like, like Dragoon, uh, Chaos Max, the Blacklist of Soldier Link. Um, it's just an absolute monster of a card. Just sending every single card on the field to the graveyard. And um, if a card is controlled... It, if a card you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can just attach one um, card from your hand deck or extra deck to discard as material. Um, it doesn't really come up that much, but uh, sometimes you can even board wipe twice if you're able to get enough material, which is really funny. Um, and finally, this is going to be our main piece of the deck, uh, Spring and Ship Explorer. Uh, we will read it. We we don't really need to read the summoning condition because you're just going to cheat it out of the extra deck with your fast death gold go Ganda. And what it does, you can choose one monster zone or spell or trap zone on the field. Um, so that's really what, and that's really what's interesting about this. Um, it doesn't really focus on cards, it focuses on the monster zones. So it basically turns any form of removal into non-targeting, uh, non which is super, um, I mean, it's notable, I guess. Um, and um, what it does, you can destroy that many you can detach any number of materials and then you can destroy a as many cards your opponent controls um in that chosen do in that chosen zone um uh, zones on the top of bottom out of it and zones on like the right and left of it um up to the number of detached material so um just to give you a demonstration say you ch ch choose the um center sp spell or trap zone then you're able to destroy cards on the left and right of it, so you're able to like pop the middle left um, spell and trap zone and the middle right spell and trap zone, and you're even able to destroy the cards in the zone above it, uh, so you're able to destroy the monster zone right above it. So it's kind of like destroys cards in a plus shape, um, if you're able to visualize it, and it's not a quick effect unfortunately, so it's only you can only use it on your turn unfortunately. Um, but what it does, it has second effect during your opponent's main or battle phase. You can banish this card until the end phase. So um, sometimes if your opponent tries to destroy it, or um, if your opponent just tries to destroy it, you can just change this card's effect to banish it, which is just uh, really neat. And um, that's how you're really going to trigger Vast Desert Gold Golganda's effect, where if it leaves it field by a card effect, since it's leaving field by a card effect, technically it's leaving field by its own card effect. You're able to use uh, Golgonda to stop a, an opponent's monster from attacking. 
Uh, in case you don't get the gist of this deck yet, it's basically kind of a control based strategy where you're going to be trying to uh, c control the game with this card as much as possible. Uh, you're going to keep it on the field, every turn you'll be able to attach material to it, destroy a lot of cards, and then if your opponent like tries to somehow remove it, you can just change its effect to banish it. Um, it's just a very, very sticky monster, and it's pretty difficult to deal with, which is kind of what I kind of like about it. And I guess we will go to like the main, kind of the best variant that is going around right now. Uh, so right here we have a Dogmatica Invoked Spriggan deck. Uh, definitely the best variant of it, since um, with dog your Dogmatica engine, you're able to just... Um, Send cards like your Splint in order to generate advantage by summoning your Sargus during the end phase, or really just summoning any of your Spriggan monsters just to get an extra material, maybe. And um, Invoked is unnatural. It, like, this deck doesn't even use its normal summon, which is crazy, which is why you're able to just splash it with so many different engines. So, um, that's why I made the Spriggan Guru deck profile. If you want to check it out, it's in the eye uh, in the top right corner. Um, doesn't use the de Springs don't really use their normal summon since you're usually just gonna depend on your vast desert gold Golganda, which is just super neat. Um, so starting off with our um, first, we have our Springs cards, then we have our Dogmatica cards, then we have our um, Invoke cards, then we just have some generic hand traps. Um, starting off with our um, Spriggan engine, uh, it's literally the same exact same as last time. Um, it's I won't really just I won't really call it out it's the exact same um, so if you didn't get it you can just um, rewind the video if you like um, so as I said the main goal of this engine is just to get your main boss monster spring ship explorer and try to just keep it on the field and every turn you're able to just destroy cards but and that lets you control the field in a very nice way and um, you're able to control the field on your opponent's turn using cards like Spriggan's Captain Sargus um, so that is just super super strong um, our Dogmatica engine, one copy of Fleur at least, one copy of Maximus Dragma, uh, three copies of Ecclesia, three copies of Nadir, one copy of Drag Dogmatica Punishment. Um, starting off with our um, main play starter, Ecclesia. Ecclesia is going to be um, just searching any of your other Dogmatica cards. Um, depending on the situation, um, if you want, you can just search the punishment, uh, or else if you're using, if you've like hard drawn it, then you want to search the Maximus, uh, the Dogmatica Maximus. Um, if you're summoning it during the end phase with the effect of your um, Titanic Cloud, then you want to search your Fleur de Lis. Um, and explaining these cards one by one, Fleur de Lis, um, if, if there's a monster special sum from the extra deck on the field, it acts as an impermanence that doesn't even target, which is super strong. Um, what Maximus Dogmatica does is um, it's able to send two cards from your extra deck to the graveyard, so it's able to send cards like your Splind, your uh, Titanic Lad. Uh, as I said, Splind is able to summon your Captain Sargus or uh, really just search anything if you want to search a Pete or something. Um, and it can send Titanic Lad, where it can just, it's basically the same as Splint, where during the end phase, if it's there, you can add or su summon a Dogmatica monster from your deck, which is uh, super neat. You can also send cards like Natis for extra pops, or cards like Omega to recycle cards. Um, so the variety that Dogmatica has is pretty wide. Um, Disciple of the Nadir, it's able to send any of your, um, any card from your extra deck to the graveyard in order to search Ecclesia or your Maximus Dogmatica, anything really. Um, and that send can be something like a Natis, Omega, as I said, Splint or Titanic Lad. Uh, it's just so vast, it's um, insane. Um, next, we finally run the one copy of Dogmatica Punishment. Uh, usually, it'll happen if you already like have the Fleur de Lis in hand. You want to like search the Dogmatica Punishment of your Ecclesia. So that, that's something, and what it does, you can send one um, dog. You can send any one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard in order to pop a monster with less attack than it. And if you send your Natis, then you're able to pop another card. Since when Natis is sent to the graveyard, you can pop another card. 
um, so it basically turns into destroy two cards. It does lock you out of the extra deck till next turn, but th th it isn't too much of a worry, honestly. Uh, we have our invoked engine. Uh, these are kind of standard ratios. Uh, three copies of Alistair the Invoker on normal summon. You can search its main uh, fusion spell, Invocation, where, where it lets you fusion summon using cards in your graveyard too. And um, it also it says um, cards from either graveyard, which is pretty important. So if your opponent maybe hand traps you, maybe they use something like an effect wheeler or something on those lines, you're able to go into an, an invoked Mechaba, which is a boss mod for the invoked archetype. Um, and that's pretty neat. On top of that, if it doesn't get interrupted, since it has 1,000 less attack, you're able to go into Salman Great Almirage, then into a Secure Gardener, which may means that you have the Alistair in the graveyard and the Secure Gardener, as, and so you can go into Invoked Mechaba once again. Um, and what Invocation does, si since um, it banishes cards from the field and graveyard, you're able to just recycle a banished Alistair the Invoker using its effect. Uh, it shuffles itself into the deck and then you add back the Alistair in the Invoker, so you're able to just do all of this again next turn. And it d does it really help with the fact that you're running triple magical meltdown, meaning um, you can just search Alistair and your opponent cannot respond to the activation of your fusion spells or the summons of your fusion monsters. Um, so magical meltdown is really nice and finally we run six hand traps uh, these can be any forms of utility cards you want uh, the triple nibiru uh, the, it kind of molds itself into the format where um, depending on the formats um, you just run it for example right now it is a format of combo decks and all these combo decks do have their weak points and they just fall to nibiru you have to run this card and triple impermanence as i said um impermanence it it's less dependent on the format I'd like to say um, but it is still a pretty pretty strong card just being able to stop any uh, monster effect um, uh, next for our extra deck we are uh, running two copies of invoked Mechaba. this is gonna kind of be our boss monster for the invoked dark type it requires Alice the invoker and one light monster which is why we have to go into the secure guard now and uh, what it does you can it, it, if your opponent activates a spell a spell monster or trap effect you have to discard a card with the same type of it in order to negate and banish that card so it doesn't destroy it banishes so it's able to bypass lots of floating effects um other um other of your uh, um invoked engine fusion monsters are invoked agreedies you can use this with something with another one of your uh, it uses alistair the invoker and another one of your fusion monsters and it says if it if this card is special summoned or another monster is special summoned to your opponent's side of the field you can destroy a card your opponent controls which is super strong and then what it does is um, once per turn you can banish one fusion monster from the graveyard and it gains attack equal that, to that um monster's attack um that, that's not too necessary, but what it basically just helps control even more because you you can just destroy any card your opponent special summons so for free. So it can if your opponent like has some ignition effect cards. Um, so if I were to think of some cards, um, let's see some ignition like they summon the Black Luster Soldier monster for example. Uh, the black luster soldier then you are able to just um instantly pop it because um i think no that that's a bad example sorry um for example they go into transco talker yeah transco talker is a really good example um they then you can just instantly pop with agreedies before they even get a chance to activate its effect which is just pretty strong and um invoke purgatrio this is just used for the otks it gains 200 attack for each monster your opponent controls it can t attack all monster your opponent controls and if it attacks a defense position monster you can inflict piercing damage you should already tell how easy this otk is along with already having a 23 Hundred attack body uh, was just super strong um then uh, some cards for the invoked engine one titanic class as i said you're usually going to be summoning your ecclesia or searching your fleur de lis um you run the double sp um splint it's kind of a spriggan dogmatic it's a mixture it's a mixture of the both really um it just lets you summon the captain sargus as i said um, we run double Natis. One Natis is usually for our punishment, and the second is sometimes for our uh, Maximus. And at that point, we just send our Omega with the Natis just so that we get a pop and we're able to recycle material with the Omega too, which is super strong. And speaking of Cyprium Lord Omega, what it does in the graveyard is that it can shuffle itself and another card in your graveyard into the deck. 
uh, which is just super strong when you're trying to loop your uh, you're able to just use uh, Maximus over and over again every turn sending your Natis your Omega and then Omega will just put them back into the extra deck then during your uh, next turn you can use um, uh, D Maximus again sending those two you're able to just pop a card every single turn which is just so strong um, a wood copy of your Negalogia is AA Zeus. Uh, this, as I said, it's a free board wipe. Uh, there's not much to say here. Uh, another thing to keep of note, uh, while you're, it also wipes out your own cards. And um, your Exoblower, since it can just chain to any card in order to banish itself, it's able to actually dodge your Negalogia AA Zeus. So you're still able to retain cards after Zeus's effect, which is um, pretty nice. Um, as a two copies of Explorer, your main boss monster just being able to control the field every single turn is always super nice. And finally, one copy of Secure Guard and one copy of Almirage. Uh, this is for the Invoked Engine. Uh, you normal summon Alistair, you link it into an Almirage. And then you link the Almirage into a Secure Guard now, uh, since it's a Cyber Slink monster. And that way you have a Light monster and a and then Alistair the Invoker in your graveyard to activate Invocation, go into Mechaba. And you also have a, an, a Fire Monster, so next turn if you want to OTK with Purgatrio, you're able to do that too. So um, that's kind of the deck profile, and I guess I should do some test hunt now. So test hunt number one. Oh, we drew four of our Springings cards. I, It's not too neat, I want to say, but it is pretty decent so um we'll have to just go ahead so start off with our magical meltdown and as i said uh, this will just showcase the invoked engine right now uh normal summon the alistair use its effect in order to go and get the search for invocation and um now this is where the end comes in we can go link into almirage since it's a cyber stink monster we can go into a secure gardener and then we can go use our invocation summon out the mechaba by using those two and then we can just summon it next we can go ahead activate spriggan's watch which will allow us to search our uh, main field spell vast desert gold golconda um, we do not want to negate our own cards uh, we're going to go ahead and use the golconda's effect discarding the sargus and we'll have the ability to summon exoblower now we can go ahead use our invocation uh, get it back our Alistair into the hand and that is kind of gonna be our end we end on one negate and uh, we will be able to get our Exoblower for next turn so um Exoblower will more than likely survive this turn so if we like just skip to our turn uh, we have our Alistair again um, but now without in, with, in terms of our Exoblower we have another Spriggan's Watch so we're able to just um get more cards uh, for example we will search a spriggan's rocky and we will dump a spriggan's banger and um just for showcase purposes this probably won't happen but we will attach every single one of our spriggan's monsters to our um explorer right here so we attach the banger we will attach the Captain Sargus too and now we are able to use its effect to destroy up to four cards that are in a plus in like a plus type um, pattern so that is pretty powerful just being able to destroy four cards on top of that you have the Alistair the invoker so we can just go ahead normal summon it use its effect in order to get a search for invocation uh, we will go ahead activate invocation and we will be able to go into the Purgatrio by using the Almarch in Graveyard and the Alistair on Field. We can go into Purgatrio, so if our opponent has any monsters remaining, we'll just be able to just get through all of them. And um, we will use the Invocation, get back our Alistair, and get a search. And that, like, just like that, we have the ability to destroy four cards our opponent controls. We had a negate on our opponent's turn in terms of with the help of Mechaba. Uh, we have the Alistair, the Invoker, which can use effect to make anything gain 1,000 attack. So if you want to make our Purgatory gain 1,000 attack, and it just has multiple attacks, which is pow really powerful. And um, this card is super difficult to out since if you if you even try to out it, you can just chain you can chain its effect and banish it until the end phase. I believe like one of the few cards that will should be able to out it is um, Access Code Talker. 
um, but even that's pretty difficult to do because just on resolution of its summon you can just use Explorer in order to banish itself so they can't even hit you with access code and then uh, Golgonda will just prevent your access code from t attacking um, it's just such a sticky monster it's very difficult to out so um, you are pretty much guaranteed to destroy four cards on your opponent's turn on your opponent's field and you have a full easy easy ODK and it has um 2600 uh, it'll have um if you, your one like only has three cards in a plus formation then uh you will want to keep your captain sargus since it gives you the 500 attack boost uh, just to easily clear for the odk um and uh, that was our test hand number one next we have test hand number two um but it's kind of similar we have drawn the golgonda we've drawn the meltdown um it should pretty much end on the same thing will be able to activate meltdown uh, i just want to keep as many cards hidden from my opponent as possible so we first activate the meltdown then we normal summon alistair so they still think we only that that is the only copy of alistair we have in our hand or field um as i said we'll just go into the Amaraj. we'll be able to go into secure gardener and then we activate invocation invocation will be able to go into mechaba using the alistair and secure gardener We'll go ahead activate our vast desert gold Golganda and then Golganda will turn into an Exoblower. An Exoblower can't really do anything turn one but it just um it turn two just does so much it's insane um we'll use invocation get back when our Alistair the invoker and um, we should pretty much be safe here. So right here we have a monster negate. Mecha Bay can only negate monsters. We have another monster negate. And our, on our opponent's turn, we will be able to turn our Alistair into a Purgatrio. And we should be able to go ahead and equip our Captain Sargus and attack for game. And we're going to top deck a Magical Meltdown, unfortunately. Um, but it does end on pretty similar stuff. Uh, now we have, now we kind of have the Dogmatica stuff. Um, this, um... The Dogmatica stuff is kind of difficult to navigate since I don't really have any other engines to support it, unfortunately. Um, so let's see, what do I want to send from my extra deck to the graveyard? Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter too much since I can't do anything. Um, I think I might as well just send an Agreedes for now, um, since I don't really have much of a choice here. Um, we're going to go ahead and search Maximus. Maximus will be... Uh, banishing the greedy summoning itself and then we will be using its effect um, is there any reason I can't use its effect um, oh yeah my I don't have an I don't have an opponent so I can't use its effect uh, that's very smart of me you know I'll just have to like switch it to an opponent for now okay I've been able to just um, set it so that it, I have an opponent I guess it's basically the same one but Fine. Uh, we've drawn an Alistair, a Magical Meltdown, and an Invocation, unfortunately. Um, but we have drawn the um, Dogmatica Maximus, so it should make things a lot better. We'll start off with our Meltdown. As I said, we want to keep as many things hidden from our opponent as possible. We'll normal summon the Alistair. We'll use its effect in order to get a search for Invocation. We'll be linking into the Almiraj, then the Cal um, not Calamity, Secure Gardener. Um, Let's see if I can actually click that will be better uh, we're gonna activate invocation uh, these steps should probably be in embedded into your memory um, they're just so common to see so now we can activate our dogmatic maximus bashing our march we won't be able to go into um, we won't we won't be able to go into a purgatory on next turn but we should be able to go into another mechaba since our dragma is a light monster we're gonna go ahead and use our maximus where it will send a titanic cloud and let's see what else do we want to send um i'd say the splint would be a nice send to have um and then our opponent sent something too i'll just send same too because why not um i mean if they send this if they send a Natis and they attempt to pop, pop the Mechaba, we can just discard the Alistair and it doesn't even matter since our Invocation will just be able to get back another Alistair, which is pretty strong. Um, and then I want to activate Spriggan's Watch. As I said, I want to keep it hidden from my opponent. Um, if I use Spriggan's Watch, they'll know I have the Gol Golganda in my hand and I just want to uh, keep it away from them. 
uh, we should be now able to use our effects they won't chain to each other they will act in separate chains uh, so we start off with the special summon of our um, ecclesia and this will let us search a copy of flirt lease so this will turn into a monster negate and then on um now we can also activate our splint splint will be able to search a copy of anything really um i guess i will search a captain sargus question mark yeah i'll just add it captain sargus i'll be able to get in my graveyard so in case i like draw um something else um do i have anything else in my graveyard no um i think it's like glitched or something thinks i have more effects actually in the graveyard so uh um, so right here, say I'm able to survive this turn, as I said, I am able to, um, say I'm able to just go ahead, activate for the lease as a monster negate. We're able to activate for the lease and our mecha bat can also act as a, another monster negate, discarding, say, this Alistair. I don't really do this. This is just for uh, showing purposes that I can activate the for the lease and the uh, mecha bat just as extra negates. So um, that's nice. During our... Uh, sorry, it cut there for a moment. Um, all you really missed is that I activated Spriggan's Watch to get Vast Desert Go Go Gonda. I should be able to go ahead activate it and um, I'll be getting use I'll use its effect uh, summon the exo blower and then exo blower will be able to destroy an extra card which is just super nice we'll be able to destroy that extra card uh, can he like I don't want to chain so we can activate its effect to destroy a card um, I can't use it since they don't have any cards on their field uh, we can normal summon the Alistair. We have both our copies of Invocation, so it doesn't matter too much. I'll use its effect. Um, uh, you should probably also use... Um, do you really want to use Maximus' effect? Uh, not really. Uh, we'll just go ahead and use the Alistair, say, in our graveyard. And our Mont and the Ecclesia in our Monster Zone in order to summon another Mecha Bup. And then we will use the Invocation. Getting a search for um, getting our thing back. We'll be able to activate Mecha Bup. Mechaba can just, um, I uh, not a Mechaba, Maximus. Maximus will be able to just send a Natis and maybe another Splind if you want. Um, I'll just send a Siphon Lord Omega for purposes. Um, they can also, like, just send the same things. Um, I don't want to use Natis. Uh, if, say, if they try to use Natis, like, pop this Exit Blower, I guess I can just chain this Mechaba, negating it. And, um, we should easily be able to attack for game from here. Um, we have the Omega to just shuffle back our Natis, which is uh, pretty strong since we'll be able to send those two again next turn. Um, I hope this kind of, and I guess those are the end of our test hands. Um, just kind of outlines how you want to play the deck. Um, it just, it's basically just a basic do dogmatic invoked uh, combos, except uh, with your Spriggans, you're, you want to just go ahead, try to turbo out your Vast Desert Gold Golganda, and then you'll be able to summon out your Exo Blower. And um, being such a sticky boss monster, it's almost impossible to take out, as I said. You're able to just stop an opponent's monster from attacking, and you're able to uh, destroy like one, two, three cards every turn. And with your Dogmatica and Invoked Engines, you are able able to just um, get extra negates, get extra interruptions. Uh, the Dogmatica help you increase consistency since you are able to search cards with your Splint. Um, and uh, in terms of your Dogmatica, you're also, with Alistair also just is turns into one card, a Mecha Bow, which means you can activate cards like your Ecclesia Special Summon Effect, or and it, get, it gets you an extra card in the graveyard for free for Maximus, uh, which is very important. And um, uh, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell as it really does help the channel. And I guess I'll see you next time. Goodbye.